What's going on do-it-yourselfers? Backwoods Mechanic here. Today we're going to be changing the rear rotors on this 2007 Chevy Uplander van. First thing I'm going to do is scotch the tires. You want to put the e-brake on if you're working on the front. If you're working on the rear though, you want to make sure you scotch your tires. You have jack stands and a jack or someone nearby to help. It's either a 19 millimeter or a 3 fourths socket that you're going to need to take the lug nuts off this van. Well, once you do that and everything is secure, you can access your brake rotor. As you can see, this is the rear of the Chevy Uplander. Now, you got two bolts here, one on top, one on the bottom. That's 15 millimeter. It goes to the caliber bracket. It actually holds the caliber on here. Then you have got the actual brake caliber, and you've got two 14 millimeter bolts for the slider bolts that goes in and out here to let this move freely back and forth. We need to go ahead and take those off because with a new rotor it might be a little bit thicker which means you're going to have to compensate for it. You can't just take off the two 15 millimeters, pull the whole thing off because, well, a brand new rotor is going to be just a smidgen thicker. So we're going to take all this off. Now, of course, whenever you're looking at this, you're looking at righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So righty-tighty is actually lefty-tighty in this situation because it's facing you. So counterclockwise if you're facing it, clockwise if you're facing it. Remember that, which if you got a ratchet, it'll do the work for you. And you take these 14 millimeters off here first. And then you can twist these slider bolts out here. There's what they look like. Set those to the side or in your magnetic tray. And then get you a screwdriver to easily pry this off. As you can see right here, you just move it back and forth, wiggle it back and forth until you get your caliber off here and then you're going to want to pull it off don't let this line get kinked up as you can see i've done this with one hand here's what your caliber looks like and it's a twist in caliber now as far as the caliber bracket housing right here i got a 15 millimeter wrench not the fancy little hyper tough banger wrench from walmart i'm going to put it on here and i'm going to tap it with this little ball peen hammer so it can loosen it up for me and make it a lot easier on my ratchets and then of course once they are loosened up with the actual wrench i will stick my ratchet on here in a socket and there we go get it off with ease by the way for any of these tools i'm using in this video for product reviews go ahead and subscribe to my channel because i do a variety of tool reviews and repair videos do it yourself videos just to kind of show everybody out here how to do stuff themselves and save a little bit of money you go ahead and loosen these up and here's what those 15 millimeters look like and we'll get the other one below and i will pull the brake shoes housing and all off right here now some of these rotors might have a set screw in them as this one does right here it is a torx head little star head we're going to have to break that loose to get this rotor off here so now we'll come over here and get us one of our Torx bits. It's going to be a T30. This nice little set, usually $100 on sale right now at Sears for 30 bucks, sometimes $20 if you got a coupon. So go check it out. Links in the description box below along with the tool review. We will slide it in there to make sure that it's nice and snug, fits good and tight. Now I'm going to want to spray some deep creep on here, WD-40, PB Blaster, some kind of lubricant to lube it up a little bit before we try to get it off here. Now sometimes, here's where having someone here will help come in handy. Sometimes you'll need to uh, loosen this up before you get started. Make sure that every, you know, caliber and everything's still on there. You can put the e-brake on for a moment to lock the brakes up and go ahead and loosen that up before you take all this off. We can spray some deep creep on there. It works wonders because this thing moves. And if it moves, the next thing you'll need to do is foul it up in between your actual studs right there that your lug nuts go on. That way you can twist and turn on this. And then you pop your little torque screw up right here and the rotor will come straight off. If it's rusted on there a little bit, spray some more deep creep, some kind of lubricant around it, and then give it some time to work and pick it with a ball peen hammer, mallet, some kind on the back side and it should pop right off. Deep creep, lubricant, sea foam, you can pick up at CarQuest. Just spray it on there and it will do its magic. Then of course you spin it around a little bit at a time, tap on it with the ball peen hammer ever so slightly and it will come right loose. And then all you gotta do is go get the new one, match it up, mount it on, put it all back together. 
and we are going to be putting on some CarQuest rotors today, part number 55119. This box has seen better days. It got a little bit wet, the lady who purchased it, but the rotors come in plastic, so it's still in perfectly good shape. And of course, it's always a good idea to line them up, make sure all the holes match up, everything is in line, so that nothing is out of line, so that you got the right part. And of course, you can tell a slight difference in the brand new one or not. That's why the brakes might need the caliber twisted back just a bit, not too much. Sometimes they'll slide right on, and we will find out. So of course, you take your rotor, you place it back up here, and you put the alignment screw back in if you want it back in. Some people take them right back out. It's just to help kind of line everything up, hold it in place. That is optional, but I'm going to put it back on there because it's not twisted or stripped out or anything, and it can come in handy. Now these do not need torques very tight, they just need snugged up in there to where it kind of holds your rotor on in place the way it should be. And so it'll pull everything in line when you put it on there. And then you can continue. Next we will go ahead and hook up our caliper bracket back in place. That way we can see if the brakes are going to line up just right or not. And usually you can tell by sliding it over it. If they move back a little bit, you might have to twist that caliber back just a little then you'll want to go ahead and start your bolts your 15 millimeters back in place here and get everything tightened up and then go ahead and tighten those up now once those are good and tight I always usually put a wrench on here and I tap it once or twice more with the ball peen hammer just enough to snug it up really good and then I'm going to go ahead and put our caliber back on here but before you do that you'll notice that these are twisted Make sure that they're twisted back and forth. They move easy in and out because these are slider pins that goes in and out of here. If you have to, and they're a little bit rough, you pull these out out of this rubber booty. You put grease inside of them and pop them back in place. Same thing with the bottom one here because that's what enables your caliber to move back and forth freely. And if those get locked up, it will cause you all kinds of problems. It will fail in your brake system and then you're going to have to replace all this if they was to get broke off inside here but make sure that these when you line them up with the bracket are nice and flat up against the groove as you can see the groove spot that way it lines up the way it's supposed to be and it keeps these from turning back and forth and getting out of line now the brake caliber is going to have to get spooled back inward and the way you do that because of the way this thing is designed as you can see right there, you had to push in on this and twist this backwards counterclockwise at the same time. Now, how you do that is with one of these little cubes here, or you can get a kit that, well, fits universal, any van, vehicle, car, truck. But these little things right here will allow you to line up on the different points. It's got two different side points here. It's got four here. It's got two different circles here. It's got all different kinds of sets and grooves on it. What you do is you put your 3 h drive inside of it. In our particular case, it's this particular side that we need to stick inside the caliber. Then you put your extension on it, and you set your ratchet on it, and then you put it for the counterclockwise lefty-loosey position, and then you've got to hold the caliber, push in, and then twist counterclockwise. So essentially, you'll be looking at this. And it don't give you very much room, very much leverage. And pushing in on these can be very difficult sometimes. So some people will loosen up the bleeder screw in order to help push this in. Or they will put a C-clamp on it for a little bit of tension and tighten it up a little at a time. Just take your time and do it. And it will work. Even if it does frustrate you. I will warn you with this particular device though. If it's the least bit rusty, the least bit stubborn... By the time you get done fighting with this thing, busting your knuckles, you're going to want to track down the person who designed these brake calibers and punch them in the face about 500 times because this is a very frustrating way to do this. Very frustrating. Now the easier way to do this is go buy yourself one of these. They got them at CarQuest. They got them online anywhere from 30 bucks up to 50 bucks. You can get them at CarQuest. Check it out. This is a Astro Pneumatic Tool Company, and it is an 18-piece brake caliber windback tool set. I will do a tour review about this in the next video. And of course you'll open it up and it'll give you all these little things that you'll need to go ahead and do the job much, much easier. Now let's go try this thing out see if it helps us any. This works by sliding it in here like so. 
putting that piece on here, winding this back, tighten it up, you can tighten it up with a wrench, and then you can twist it in that way. Now you can loosen up your bleeder plug there, and you can take an adjustable wrench there, tighten this thing up, twist this, tighten this thing up back and forth, and it does push it in really easy. Now as you can see, because of that particular brake caliber tool, this went back easy as pie. I will do a video on that. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, because when I get 1,101 viewers, I'm going to be giving away some tools on this channel. Then after you get it tight in place, like I said, make sure these little flat spots here are in the flat spot on your caliber whenever you line them up. That way it keeps everything in line the way it's intended to be. And of course, make, thing you, make sure you tighten everything up good and tight, not too tight not like strip it tight just tight enough to where you know it's not going to come loose and then make sure all your bleeders are tight go continue to check and make sure that your brake fluid is good because whenever you put all this back together you're going to have to pump your brakes and make sure that you got good braking if not you're going to have to bleed them after this process too and of course your brake fluid will go right here make sure it's up to the max line now they do make kits that you can buy to where you can actually bleed the system. It's a vacuum bleed kit and you hook the vacuum pump up to the bleeder plug and then you put pressure on the vacuum, pump it up, release it, and it'll bleed it from the back so you ain't got to bleed it afterwards. So if you have the time to check out one of those vacuum kits, you know, I would recommend them for solo brake jobs and all that because you could just vacuum it out, not worry about it. Or you can check out the redneck method to bleeding your brakes, which... I'll post in the link in the description box below also. But that is all there is to it as far as taking and replacing the rotor on this. And the brakes are the same thing. If you needed pads, you could have just popped the pads off, popped the pads on. And then you push the caliber back in the exact same way. So all I have to do now is make sure to put the tire on, tighten everything up. You all want to see tool reviews, do-it-yourself videos, how-to videos, boat repairs, automotive, industrial repairs. I do a little bit of everything and I buy a little bit of everything as far as tools go. So... If you want to stay tuned go ahead and hit that subscribe button when i get the 1101 viewers some subscribers are going to be randomly chosen to get something that i have reviewed on this channel so like dislike comment below ring the bell and i see you next time